Good morning, everyone. I don't know where to start with with the happy days. We have confirmation in North Liberty today. It's Ascension Sunday, and it's Mother's Day. What a glorious day to be here, joining to, with one another in God's Word. A warm welcome to all of our guests and friends and neighbors this morning. Uh, my name is Pastor Lucas Kalise. I'm down in North Liberty almost all the time, helping start our second campus. Um, we have a beautiful service plan today. Uh, above all, all the things we just mentioned, uh, but of course, we continue in our resurrection reality. Christ is closer than ever, even though ascension means he's getting further away physically, right? And with that, we're going to start with our opening song coming from the shepherd kids as they start our worship. May God bless our worship this morning. Thank you, guys. Um, also, I forgot to mention at the end of service, we do have a Wells connection this morning. So we get to look forward to that and a bunch of other fun things that we are doing and coming up in ministry. Um, as we continue with our Resurrection Reality Sunday, um, we have one more connected to this, and that's Pentecost next week. So we look forward to wrapping up our service theme next week, Sunday. Um, we begin with our opening hymn then, Jesus Christ is Risen Today.
Please stand. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Let us confess our sins to the Lord. Holy God, gracious Father, I am sinful by nature and have sinned against you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have not loved you with my whole heart. I have not loved others as I should. I deserve your punishment both now and forever. But Jesus, my Savior, paid for my sins with his innocent suffering and death. Trusting in him, I pray, God have mercy on me, a sinner. Our gracious Father in heaven has been merciful to us. He sent his only son, Jesus Christ, who gave his life as the atoning sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ, and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Amen. For the peace from above, and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, King of glory, on this day you ascended far above the heavens, and at God's right hand you rule the nations. Leave us not alone, we pray, but grant us the spirit of truth that at your command and by your power we may be your witnesses in all the world. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. You may be seated. After Jesus ascended into heaven, he gave us a clear and specific duty here on earth to spread the gospel. Our first reading comes from Acts chapter 1. I wrote my first book, Theophilus, about everything Jesus began doing and teaching until the day he was taken up. After he had given instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles he had chosen. After he had suffered, he presented himself alive to the apostles with many convincing proofs. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and told them things about the kingdom of God. Once, when I was eating with them, he commanded, Do not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for what the Father promised, which you heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they were together with him, he asked, Lord, is this the time when you are going to restore the kingdom of Israel? He said to them, it is not for you to know the times or the seasons that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. After he said these things, he was taken up while they were watching, and a cloud took him out of their sight. They were looking intently into the sky as he went away. Suddenly, two men in white clothes stood beside them. They said, Men of Galilee, why are you standing here looking up into the sky? This same Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. The word of the Lord. God. All you peoples, clap your hands. Yes, the Lord Most High is awesome. He is the great king over all the earth. He subdues peoples under us and nations under our feet. He chooses our inheritance for us. It is the pride of Jacob whom he loves. Make music for God. Make music. For God is the king of all the earth. Make music for him who is with a wise song. The nobles of the peoples come together as the people of the God of Abraham. Yes, the shields of the earth belong to God. He is great in his salt. Our second reading comes from Ephesians chapter 4 and will be the basis of our sermon this morning. He ascended after he rose from the dead, and yet he continues to give us gifts. But to each one of us, grace was given according to the measure of the gift from Christ. That is, that is why he, it says, When he ascended on high, he took captivity captive and gave gifts to his people. Now, what does it mean when it says he ascended, other than he has also descended to the lower parts, namely the earth? He who descended is the same one who ascended far above the heavens, so that he might fill all things. He himself gave the apostles as well as the prophets, as well as the evangelists, as well as the pastors and teachers for the purpose of training the saints for the work of serving in order, order to build up the body of Christ. This is to continue until we reach unity in the faith and knowledge of the Son of God, resulting in a mature man with a stature reaching to the measure of the fullness of Christ. 
the glory is that we would no longer be little children tossed by the waves and blown around by every wind of teaching when people use tricks and invent clever ways to lead us astray. Instead, speaking the truth in love, he, we would in all things grow up into Christ, who is the head. For or from him, the whole body being joined and held together by every supporting ligament grows in accordance with Christ's activity when he measured out each individual part. He causes the growth of the body so that it builds itself up in love. The word of the Lord. Please stand in honor of our gospel lesson. gospel lesson this morning comes from Luke 24, his account, uh, his second account we've read this morning of Jesus' ascension. He said to them, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. Then he opened their minds to, the, and to understand the scriptures. He said to them, this is what is written, and so it must be. The Christ will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and repentance and forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. Look, I am sending you what my father promised, but stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. He led them out as far as the vicinity of Bethany, he lifted up his hands and blessed them. And while he was blessing them, he parted from them and was taken up into heaven. So they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. They were continually in the temple courts, praising and blessing God. Amen. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Jesus. Congregation may be seated. We ask that the young children come forward, please. You can stay standing right on that step right there. You can stay standing right on that step right here. Stay standing right over here. We're going to need some room this morning. So we were just talking about in Ephesians that Christ wants us to build up our bodies. Do you know how to build up your bodies? What do you do to build up your bodies? What do you do? Exercise, lift weights. We're going to be bodybuilders this morning. Are you ready? Give a little bit of space. We're going to do some jumping jacks first to warm up. All ready? So give a little space, maybe off the step. I don't want you guys to fall. I don't know why I asked you to stand on the step. All right, everybody know how to do a jumping jack? All right, let's do three jumping jacks. Ready? One, two, three. Okay, um, we haven't done our legs yet. Let's do a little bit of running in place. Ready? Go. Run in place, run in place, run in place, run in place. You know what? We didn't do much arms yet. Everybody know how to do a push-up? Want to do a push-up? Let's do a push-up. Everybody down? For a push-up? Ready? And one push-up? Good job. All right. Come on up now. So, is this what God was asking us to do to build up our bodies? Oh, it wasn't. You see, he was talking about a different body, wasn't he? He wasn't talking about our physical bodies but the body, the body that is the church, not just this church, but everyone who is a believer. Do you know how you build up the church, the body of Christ? You eat the right foods? You exercise every day? That's not how, is it? How do we? How do you grow in God? How about this? Pretty good answer, right? He did give this to us after all. 
He gave us his words right here to say, this is the truth. This is love. The more you are in this, the greater the growth of the body of Christ. Each and every one of us are part of the body. Okay, that doesn't mean we're all fingers, right? Some of us are feet or legs or arms or the torso or the neck, right? But most important, who is the head of the body? Jesus is, absolutely. Where do we know that? We know that right here. We learn that right here that he is our Savior and what he did for us. The Bible, exactly. So I want you to leave today with the knowledge that you are part of the body of Christ. And you don't, you're not saying you shouldn't work out and be, go do exercises in that. But this right here is what Christ wants you in, what Jesus wants you to learn, like when you're in Shepherd Kids, like what you sang this morning, right? So let's close with a prayer, asking God to give us strength as we are in the body of Christ. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, you sent your Son, the head of our body, Help us now to light up the world and be the rest of the church. In your name we pray. Amen.
Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, as you have presented to us in your whole entire ministry, you have proven that you are the head of our church. Help us to see that truth this morning and the blessings that you have provided to us as your body. In your name we pray. Amen. I was this close, this close to saying our sermon text today was bodybuilders. And you and I would have done all those exercises. But I took the bullet. I did it. I'm, I'm sweating already. We're going to talk about a different thing we did while growing up. Maybe, maybe most of you played with these, but how many of you played with Legos when you were growing up? Anybody? Who's playing with Legos? All right, all right. Uh, how many of you still play with Legos? Yeah, all right. L Legos are a pretty cool thing. Um, if I can get this work in here, too, that would even be more helpful. Legos are something that you can start from nothing, right? Absolutely nothing is there. It's just a pile of scattered colors, and you form it into whatever you want. Now, it may take some time to get there, right? You may have to really think about it or, or find the right pieces, but eventually you create the structure that's yours. You build with Legos all the time. You build anything. We're going to talk about a different type of building, though. A different type of constructing something. And that is us as the body of Christ. He is building us up. Even though he rose from the dead and is no longer with us, he is still building us up. The key word in this building up that you'll see repeated in our text, if you, if you didn't catch it already, is unity. He's building us up in unity. And so as, as we, we look through our text, I want to help everyone to see that even though he ascended, he is still building us up. Now you might be thinking, hey, Jesus' ascension is kind of the opposite of building up. He, he's not here anymore. Wouldn't it be nice if he was up in front doing the sermon today? Absolutely, it would be way better than this one. But he isn't. He departed earth. He's up in heaven. D does that mean he didn't want to build us up? Does that mean he left us? No, actually the exact opposite. How did the disciples react in our gospel lesson today? Were they, were they grabbing for his legs and saying, no, 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 don't leave us? Were they crying afterwards that he was gone? No. They were joyful. They, they worshipped him. They praised him. And then they ran into town and worshipped and talked about everything he taught them day after day after day. This was a joyous day. A day that we've been celebrating for a long, long time as a church. This is a triumphant day. A day that fulfilled the last of really all of his promises besides his return. He needed to ascend to fulfill that prophecy. And so when he ascended, he is now taking full divine power back into his hands. He isn't just focused in, in Galilee anymore or Jerusalem. He's focused on the whole entire world now. 
every single generation to come. He's using his divine power to, to connect us all, unite us, and build us up in faith. Imagine trying to find him right now to talk to him if he was still here on earth. Anytime you wanted to talk with him, you'd have to get on a plane, fly over to Jerusalem, and find him maybe somewhere in Galilee. Who knows? You want to hear him speak? You have to do the same thing. But now, because he is where he is, we can pray to him anytime we want. We can talk to him anytime we want, any place we want. We can listen to his words anytime we want by just opening up scripture. If you don't know it, it's all the red words. In fact, it's all the words. He continues to build us up through his word. Even though he's seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty, he's still building us up. That's where our text in Ephesians comes in. He starts a new topic and he says this, but to each one of us, grace was given according to the measure of the gift from Christ. We just said what Christ did for us. He died and rose again for us. But there's more than that. That grace started it. He's giving us more gifts than that yet. In fact, no one's left out. Each one of us. No one can say, well, I didn't get anything from Jesus. Of course you did. It's a promise that each and every one of you are either going to get one amazing blessing or a ton of amazing gifts in some fashion in your life. It's a promise. This is what Jesus is continuing to do while he is up in heaven. He continues to build up the body of Christ. He connects it then with his ascension. That is why it says, when he, took, when he ascended on high, he took captivity captive and gave gifts to his people. Who did he take captive? All of our enemies. Sin, death, and the devil, captive. No, more, no longer a threat to our lives for all eternity. Yes, they still influence us to sin. And I pray they never bring us away from faith. But now death doesn't have a power over us. It's not chaining us down. That's the only outcome in our lives. He, captive, he, he took them captive. He descended down into hell and shown them triumphantly, I won. He preached the gospel there, not to bring them out from hell, but to show them this is what beat you. Me, what I did as a savior. I paid for their sins. You can't hold that over them anymore. That doesn't get taken away from us, even though he's ascended, right? Even though he rose from the dead and we didn't get to see that. Even though he ascended 40 days later, that is still true. We are still triumphant because tri Christ was triumphant. We are still victorious because Christ was victorious. And now, those who are victorious, and he gave gifts to his people. That's us. He's talking about you and I, believers now. These are the gifts. Well, we'll get into the gifts. He gives us these gifts now because we are part of the body, part of the body of Christ. I found this picture. I really like this picture. It's just, it just shows everyone is functioning together. This is, a, this is a helpful way I tried to find for unity. We all are working together to now glorify God and do what he has asked us to do. It's not that just the arm is doing something over here and the leg is doing something over here. We're all working together. You know, what does he say at the end? Every ligament is functioning together, right? The whole body works together. If it isn't, something's wrong with the body, right? And so he starts, he starts explaining this. And, and there's two different ways you can kind of think of it. If we are to prepare and to build up each other, Using God's word, there are two different types of people we can do that with. One is with the people in this room, in reach. Those who already are believers, we're strengthening each, each other up. We're strengthening and, and, and getting deeper into God's word, rooting ourselves deeper in his word so that when those, whoa, those strong winds come, we, we don't tip over and waver. But that's not everyone, is it? You see, there's another term, outreach. The people not in these rooms. 
Which one has more? Which one do you think we ought to emphasize more? There's a lot more people who don't know Jesus and what he did for them, but he still wants us to get to them too. He said, start in Jerusalem. And once you get done there, then go on to Judea, and then Samaria, then to the ends of the earth. That means Iowa. That's us here. In reach and outreach as functioning as the body of Christ, presenting the gospel, teaching people, enriching them in their lives. And, and, and if you didn't get this yet, here are a bunch of different gifts. This is a combination of the gifts from Romans 12 and 1 Corinthians 12. Do you see any that you are gifted with up there? Do you see any that you have used in your life and go, yeah, I've done that. That is a blessing I have. And if you can't see one up there, look right in the center because faith is up there. And we all have faith. This are just some of the gifts that he uses as an example. He didn't even mention these in our verses, though, did he? He just says, you're already receiving gifts. What he mentions is what comes right after that. In verse 11, I forgot a verse. Rewind one second. Even though all these gifts are given to us, each individually in different ways, he says this, don't forget who it came from. One and the same spirit produces all of these, distributing them one, each one individually as he desires. That means not all of us are going to have the same exact gifts. Each and every one of us are going to have different gifts. Maybe there's going to be some overlap. Maybe you can work together on encouraging with somebody else because they're also good at encouraging. Whatever it is, though, these gifts are to be used with the same function of all the things we're going to talk about next. The offices he also connects. And that's in verse 11 of Ephesians. He himself gave, here's some offices, apostles, prophets, as well as evangelists, as well as pastors and teachers. This is how he designed the church to function, the body of Christ to function. These offices are then to do the leadership roles in us as the church. These roles are influential in, in, in every aspect that we do in ministry, but they don't do everything. You combine that with the gifts, and you combine the offices with those gifts, and you go, this is how the body of Christ functions. All of these things included. If it was only the pastor doing everything, we wouldn't get a lot done, right? Two of us, 500,000 people in the corridor, not going to happen. But as a church, as a working, functioning body together, so much more can be done. The body of Christ functions in a way exactly how God wanted it to. He designed it exactly the way he knew it would work. If the head wasn't Christ, this body wouldn't work. The focus, the, the unity that we have in building each other up is focused on Christ. And he says to do that in love. So if it is correcting or rebuking, you do it in love. If it is teaching or preaching, you do it in love. We continue in that aspect as we go out with all throughout ministry all of our lives. Each and every one of us are part of the body of Christ. But then he warns us. He warns us that we're not all at the same place in our faith. Some of us are in our adolescence in our faith, and some of us are closer to adult in our faith. Then there brings in the goal. He wants us all to be mature, mature adult in, in faith Christians. He wants us to, to grow to a point that we can hold our own. He wants us to be in the fullness of Christ. That means sin free. That's our goal, but it's impossible on this side of heaven. We strive for that. We strive to be, to be as close as we can to what Jesus did here on earth we won't make it. So how close can we get? That's the building up process, right? How much can we build up? But what happens if you stay in your adolescence of faith? What happens if you don't keep on growing? What happens if you don't keep on building up? That's where he warns us. 
He warns us because there are so many different things that are trying to divide the body of Christ. There are so many different things that try and, try and put division or, or disunity so that we don't function as one body. The devil, the world, and our sinful nature just, just wants to break everybody apart. He wants us to work in disunity and work all over the place instead of working together. Think of a time maybe you got angry with another member or a family member. Maybe, maybe there was a disagreement that just broke a friendship and, and no longer, oh, I, I, I don't want to talk to that person anymore. Or maybe it even goes to the reason why we do things here at church for ourselves. That shows disunity. That's the exact opposite of what Christ wants the body to function as. Watch out for those things that are creeping in. They, they, they sound so simple. They're so easy to creep in. They sound convincing. They even sound like the truth sometimes. But then that's breaking each other up. He, he gave another picture, which I really liked. Think of a boat tied to a dock and a big storm is coming. How tight would you tie the boat to the dock? As tight as possible, right? The rope is God's word. The tethering, how hard you knot and how many knots you put it on is how much we can waver through the storms, those difficult times, whether it be here at Good Shepherd or out in our lives. When that disunity, that distrust starts showing up, we cling on to God's word. We can cling on to that in love. And show love to that other person. I think that's a really good example of just where our faith is sometimes. Sometimes we're really loose. Sometimes we're really tight. Our goal is to be tight right up against the dock and we never get shaken, though. I think that's a beautiful image. But the building up process isn't easy. It isn't perfectly clear and going, all right, I'm going to start here, and in 10 days, I'm done. It's a process. It's going to take a long time. This is a, this is a, a Lego set that's halfway done, right? This is kind of where we are. We have more than just a little bit of faith, but we aren't completely in the fullness of Christ yet. It's a process. The more we're in God's word, the closer we get to completion. But where is full completion? When we join Jesus in heaven for all eternity. We work together as a church. It's kind of hard to say that when we have two different campuses, right? We have two different campuses, but yet we have the same purpose. We have the same mission statement. We have the same core values. We have the same vision as a church. We have the same head as the body of Christ. We are functioning together to reach all the people in the corridor. That means inreach and outreach, right? People who know Christ and don't know Christ. Building each other up in God's word. What are your gifts? What are your gifts that the Lord has blessed you with that you can be a part of this ministry as well? Maybe in a way you haven't even thought of yet. Pray that the Lord will give you courage to use those gifts. To be a part of the inreach or the outreach, wherever it is in life. And whoever it is in life. Because he is always building us up. The more we are in God's word, the more he is building us up as the body of Christ. So stay in God's word. Stay in God's word, be rooted deep, tie that rope tight so that we may never be shaken and our faith may always be secure in the one who is building us up. Amen. Please stand and join us as we confess our faith in unity with the words of the Apostles' Creed. We confess together, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, 
suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. As we continue with the prayer of the church, we also keep in our prayers today all mothers. We pray. It has been you, Lord, from our mother's arms that you have blessed us on our way with countless gifts of love. In our mother's endless hours of caring for us, watching over us and praying for us, you are holding us in your arms. We give thanks to you for the mothers you have given us. Richly bless them according to their needs and make them strong to carry out their responsibilities. Just as you gather your children under the shelter of your wings, give mothers the same desire to protect and comfort those entrusted to their care. Eternal Lord, Give us peace as we ponder the good news that you forgave our sins in Christ. Lead us to see clearly the path you have laid out for us. Provide courage and compassion to all who preach and teach your word. Fill them with love like yours as they proclaim your grace to us and all people. Guard and guide the families of our congregation. Lead husbands to, and wives to love each other with commitment, respect, and patience. Help parents to grasp the eternal value of keeping their children close to Jesus all their lives. Grant joy to those who are single and make them a blessing to others. Provide wisdom and insight to those who make laws and set policies. Give us respect for those who protect us from crime. Lead us to value the rights of our fellow citizens and to defend those who cannot defend themselves. Give us passion to share the story of your love with our family and friends. Overcome unbelief and open the hearts of people everywhere to believe the good news that Jesus has forgiven their sins and opened the gates of heaven. Extend your healing power to those who are sick and suffering in body or mind. Give patience and compassion to all, all, whose care, all who care for the sick and dying. Hear us, Lord, as we pray in silence. Gracious God, you govern and direct all things, and you love all people. Hear our prayers, spoken and silent, and answer them in your wisdom and grace. As we continue with the offering, if you haven't filled out the connection card, please, even if it's just jotting down your name, that'd be great. Thank you.
We continue with our next hymn found on page 15 on Christ's ascension, I now build. We pray. Blessed Lord, you have given us your holy scriptures for our learning. May we so hear them, read, learn, and take them to heart, that being strengthened and comforted by your holy word, we may cling to the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Father in heaven. Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Receive the blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. You may be seated for our closing hymn.
I forgot to warn him. That was my fault. We'll do the announcements quick, then we'll close with that, okay? Good morning again, everyone. Um, warm welcome to all of our guests and visitors today. I know this is a busy day, and we have we have a lot of fun activities to do with our, our, our mothers after this. Um, I'm just going to highlight a couple things, a couple new things this week. Uh, a couple of the things that have been repeating, I'll probably just skip. There's a lot of good stuff. Read through it, please. Um, no Bible study today. Uh, there's just going to be fellowship, if I'm correct, if, if what I heard. Downstairs, coffee and snacks. Uh, please talk to, talk to one another in love and in unity downstairs. Uh, softball starts tomorrow. Um, last year, we didn't get first place, but I think we got like third, didn't we, Lon? I thought we got like third or fourth. We got first the year before, so if you'd like to come watch us, uh, we're switching uh, places we're playing. Um, I don't remember the name of it now. Tate Cummins, there. That's where we're playing. Um, let's see. I said softball. Mail slots, they are now in their new places. Thank you for all who helped out with that. Last day for Hugo's door offering. offering. He's graduate, or graduating and becoming a pastor uh, this month. And last thing is Little Lamb's Playgroup is this Saturday. Uh, if you know anybody with young children, five or under, please invite them to that. Uh, we have a fun one this week. Um, uh, farm animals are coming into town, and they get to have some uh, fun time uh, playing with the goats and chickens. So please pray that that goes well. Uh, and we'll continue with our Wells Connection. President Mark Schrader. By God's grace, enrollment at our 28 area Lutheran high schools is up across our synod. With that comes exciting opportunities, especially considering a good portion of that growth is from unchurched families. Here's the story of one of those families. Hi, Eve. Welcome to Calvary Lutheran High School. Hi, nice to meet you. It's so great to have you here. Thanks. When Eve Mankey was considering a high school for her daughter, it was important to her and her husband, Joel, to find a school with traditional Christian values. We had started in a public school, and then after seeing what is taught in public schools, we decided to go to a private school. After a simple Google search, Kettle Moraine Lutheran High School in Jackson, Wisconsin, was the first school on Eve's list to tour, and it quickly became the only school they visited. I thought this would be such a great setting to have our kids in because they would be learning academics, which is super important, but they would also be getting the values that are we thought were so important for them to get reinforced pretty much every day at Kettle. So uh, we'll go around the corner here. The Mankeys were so impacted by Kettle Moraine Lutheran High School that they relocated to the area so that their children could attend. They were already looking to make a move, as Joel had recently lost his job due to COVID, and the area around Kettle Moraine Lutheran High School seemed like the right place for them. We felt comfortable and confident that Kettle would be teaching them the things that they should be learning, and that they wouldn't be sneaking in stuff that we were not comfortable with. The first thing that people typically say is, man, people are really nice around here. And obviously that is a takeoff from the work that we do and the belief that we have in our Savior. It's the character that we teach, that we expect from one another. And people are drawn to that. And they see people living differently than the world around them. They're drawn to that safe, loving place. Please keep 
this in mind with everything that you do. Whether As a result, Kettle Moraine Lutheran High School has been experiencing growth in its enrollment, averaging 17 new students per year for the last decade. And this growth isn't unique to Kettle. It's an overall trend in area Lutheran high schools across our church body, as the Wells Commission on Lutheran Schools recently reported at their annual conference. Area Lutheran high schools have risen by over 10.8% in the last five years. We have just seen a growth of both Wells members and members of the community who in the past maybe didn't value a secondary Christian education as much as they do today. With that growth comes great opportunities. One, to encourage more young people to study for the public ministry at Martin Luther College. With the greatness of increases in, in enrollment, there's also a bit of a, of a caution there, and that is, are we able to keep up and provide the workers necessary to be able to keep up with this opportunity? And that's where we come in. The members of our congregations, uh, the cult workers, to encourage those kids, those fewer kids, um, in considering, could you do that? Could you go out and share Jesus in a full-time way in a congregation, in a school, in an early childhood program? And the second opportunity? To connect unchurched families to their Savior through the gospel in word and sacraments at a nearby Wells congregation, which is exactly what happened with the Mankeys, who are also looking for a grade school for their two younger daughters. And once they moved to the Hartford area, I said, hey, you got to check out Peace Lutheran. They got a great staff over there, a great congregation. They're going to be fed with God's word every single week. So, and that's what they did. And uh, the rest is history. They're members there now. They're so happy. And it's just, uh, it's amazing how the Lord worked that all out for them. Peace Church, it like when I'm there, I feel at peace. Taking the time to write down so that, be it the administrative assistance, pastor in religion class, the shop teacher, that they all know and understand their role in how to connect those families with the local congregation. There is an absolute truth. We are told what it is in the Bible. That truth doesn't change. And that's actually a big comfort when you know that there is an absolute truth. If you're teaching that to your kids, you want your school teaching that to your kids too, because that's where they are all day long. The Mankey story is one where we can see God's gracious plan unfolding right in front of us, working by His Spirit through Christ's gospel, shared by an area Lutheran high school and its people. And if you noticed, it didn't take much, just an opportunity from the Lord and a simple invitation. Thank you.